Thank you for joining me for PM Artist Studios Makers Creative Collab Spooky Scroll Month. We are creating spooky scrolls from three items out of six different categories, and there are 10 people participating. So there will be 10 videos from nine different channels. The channels are listed here. The links to all of those will be in my description, and I will link you to the next channel or PM Artist Studio in my end screen. This is my rendition of the spooky scroll. So I hope you will join me as I create this scroll during this video. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. And of course, the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So to get started with this scroll, I received from the individual that is linking to my video a little trick-or-treat bag full, full of items. I in turn sent one to PM Artist Studio. This is what Felicia sent to me, and I will be using these items in my scroll. I also am, have printed this witch, and I'm going to pull in some bark or some a stick, some different fabrics, some different strings, and we will collage down this piece of canvas and create our scroll out of that. This is the canvas that I'll use as my substrate. To get my witch ready, I'm going to cut her out and coat her up with three coats of Mod, Mod Podge or glue and water mixture letting it dry in between the coating. So I'm going to coat her up and set her aside. I'm going to check where my stick will fit in at the top of my scroll and just mark that so I don't collage too high. I'm beginning with a piece of burlap and this is just a burlap ribbon. I'm cutting the wired edge off of it to get down just to the burlap. I'm pulling some of those threads to distress it or rag it up a bit and I'll use that as my bottom layer. I have this piece of brown cloth that I will pull in as well as a piece of that paper that was sent to me by where baking meets crafting. So we'll stick that in there and I have some images out of the sheet that she sent me that I will also be cutting out. I have a button that I am going to utilize as well. So to Put these in place so I can take it over to my sewing machine and sew them into place. I am just adhering them with a light coat of glue and water mixture. Searching for a little piece of cheesecloth that was on the list. So I have list one. I have this the stick and the cheesecloth already. And now I'm using this black embroidery thread to sew that button on. And I just want to adhere that button so I can sew around the outside edges of this fabric. But I want that, that button. The only way I think I can really keep it in place is just to sew it in here. And I just want to get enough of that embroidery floss through it that I can tie it off at the top. And then we'll leave the little strings from that tie hanging as well. And I just glued that cheesecloth down a little bit. I'm going to pull in one of those cut pieces and tuck it here over on the side that says Danger. And this will be the first little collage on my scroll. So you see how that's, that's going to work? And here is it finished. So that's collage number one. And now let's move on to collage number two. I have laid down a piece of lace. I have covered it with a little bit of canvas and I have this rusty nail. I have a bunch of nails. We moved, uh, pulled up a piece of decking 
and we burned the wood, and then I pulled all the nails out of the fire pit and have them in a baggie, and I use them periodically in different projects, and I thought this would be a great place to use them because they are easily rolled into my scroll. So I've just twisted my threads around and tied those off, and I have some gold thread that I will pull in and sew that nail into place right here on our second little collage section of the scroll. And of course, I have taken these background pieces to my sewing machine and have done a zigzag stitch around the outside edge of both. And I'm just going to sew back and forth, back and forth on this nail until I feel confident it is securely in place. And here is an image of that finished second little collage area. And I love how that gold thread looks. So now that we have those two in place, let's get ready for section number three, which is going to be our witch. Now our witch is, has dried. We'll give her one final coat. And I have some fabric that I'm going to put into place that we are going to transfer the image of that witch onto this tightly woven linen fabric. So I will coat the fabric with that glue and water, place that witch down, and I will use my spoon to make sure that she is connected in every way and will let her dry. And once she is dry, I'm going to pull her back in, squirt her with a little bit of water, and rub that paper off, leaving the image on the fabric. And once we have that complete, we'll sew her into place on this little background piece of fabric that I've laid down. I have this little piece of gold ribbon that I think I'll tuck behind her. Some messy threads at the bottom. I'm trying to decide if I want to add anything else in there. I think I want some more black in there, but I, I'm i going to add the black by adding just some black thread into that messy thread. So here she is completed. And I think she adds to our spooky for the scroll. So now we'll move on to the next section and just continue to collage these bits of fabric. And on this one I'm gluing these threads down into place with a little bit of Fabri-Tac because there's quite a few threads there and I wanted to make sure that I held them securely. And I have just glued a few pieces of fabric down. We'll finish it off with a little button here and sew that button into place. I'm also going to add another little piece that I cut out of that piece of paper that was sent to me by Where Baking Meets Crafting. It's a little bottle that says poison down the side, and you can see it here. So this is the next piece, or the fourth piece of collage, and we will finish this off with one last little collaged area. I'm going to lay down yet another nail. I have this black netting that I shall lay down, some fabric. I'm thinking about adding something in here, but I think that rather than add in another piece, I'm going to pull out my stamps and stamp the word danger onto this fabric with this black archival ink. So I have 
the D, the A, all together. I'm going to tape them together so they I can get them straight. I'm just using some painter's tape. I'm going to ink those stamps up and just stamp right onto that fabric. And I think that gives an eerie little background look of the word danger. We'll stick those black threads on there. Pulled in another piece of fabric to put behind it that had that nice coffee stain on the back of it. We'll veil it a bit with some cheesecloth. And highlight it with some black embroidery thread. And of course, one more nail. I'm going to twist that uh, eyelash trim. I pulled that eyelash trim out earlier and haven't used it yet. So I'm going to just twist that eyelash trim around that final nail. And we'll set that in place and secure it into place by sewing around it with that black embroidery thread. We'll tie that off, trim it up, and that completes this final section of our scroll. And you can see where I've sewn everything into place. I'm going to scoot back up to the top and glue that stick in and turn the top over. And I will then sew it into place with that gold thread. Just going to trim all of these straggly threads off to clean this up. We'll just go down and that's where the witch is adhered and, and she was done last in the actual, I did her last, I had to let her dry, but I put her in the video in the order that she appeared. So now we'll sew this gold thread to just secure that stick into place. And there we go. So now let's flip this over and do the back of the scroll. So I have chosen this plain coffee stain paper to use on the back with some coffee filters. And I am going to just write the shake the Shakespeare piece of poetry, Double, Double, Toil and Trouble. And that will be written down the entire length of the back of this scroll. So let me just hand write this out. I'm just using an ink pen and writing on the, on the coffee stain paper. And we'll finish it on the second little sheet and get that piece of poetry in completion written on the back. And now I am going to wax that piece of poetry to kind of age it and make it crackle it up a bit so the wax kind of crackles when you turn it and it ages and archival looking piece of, of poetry here. So I have this candle. I'm just scraping the candle wax over the top of my image. I've laid down one piece of parchment paper because it will not stick to that part parchment paper. We'll stick the parchment paper over the top of it when we get all our wax and just hit it with a dry hot iron. 
do the same thing to my coffee filter here. And that makes those very transparent, gives them just a little bit of age and a really nice feel. So I will glue that down I'm using the Fabri-Tec ink or the Fabri-Tec glue. And I will glue that into place. And there you have the back of the scroll. I'm going to take that to my sewing machine and just kind of secure it. Now at the bottom, I have put in one of these hitch fasteners from Tim Holtz. You can see they come in two pieces and they just screw together. And to tie it off, I'm going to use jute, but I'm going to create a couple of little beads out of this printed piece that was sent to me. So I am creating some long triangular shapes off of my Fisker's cutting tool here. And I'm making them about an inch wide and then just scooting it over to pull it down into a triangular cut. Have my skewer. I'll just roll this piece around the skewer. And we will glue that off, that end off. I'm just going to use my glue stick and add some glue to the end. And there we have a little bead that we can attach to the jute that we are going to tie this scroll together with. We'll just create a few. And now thread, thread the bead through the jute. We'll make a little knot. Can knot on each side of the bead. And we'll do that on both ends of a long string of jute. So I put one on, knotted the jute, put a bead on, knotted the jute again, put a second bead on, knotted it again. Now I'm going to go down to the other end and do the same thing. Knot, bead, knot, bead, final knot. And there is what we are going to use to tie around the scroll. And I will just tie that to that little hitch fastener. Let's get this rolled up. Tie this to the hitch fastener. And tuck it into place. So I'm just going to knot that around that hitch fastener. Now that I've made sure that it'll work, we'll wrap that around. And there is our completed scroll. So now just to finish it up, I have some of this gold gilders wax and I decided that I wanted to add just a little bit of that gold to those beads. And I have one little piece that I needed to re-glue there. And why not open that scroll up and, and just kind of hit throughout that scroll with that gold gilders wax. I think that adds a little punch to it. And I'm also going to wax up that stick as well. Let's roll it back up, tie it off, wax the ends of that stick, and we will call that a scroll completed. So here is my finished product. These are the sections of that scroll, and I'll just go through each one of them very quickly.
And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So this is the backside. And thank you for joining us for this Makers Creative Collab. I will be sending you to PM Artist Studio. And I hope you will take a moment and check the description and get all of the links and give everybody a little bit of love with some thumbs up and subscriptions to their channels. Bye for now.